guys, Portalmaster9351 here, and in today's video, I wanted to discuss something interesting about the Spyro remakes that nobody else seems to have picked up on that is actually a fairly obvious thing if you're just familiar with the developer Toys for Bob at all. So, as someone who has followed Toys for Bob for the past several years due to my obsession with Skylanders, I'm pretty familiar with Toys for Bob, and I wanted to talk about something interesting that I noticed on their website that, like I just said, no Spyro fans seem to have caught on to. So let's dive in. Okay, so basically, I have been trailing the Toys for Bob job applications for a really, really long time because I have been looking for clues as to whether or not Toys for Bob was developing a Skylanders 7, which originally I actually thought there was a chance of that considering we all thought, or at least a large majority of people thought, that Toys for Bob was not developing the Spyro remakes and then, in, in fact, uh, Vicarious Visions was the company that was working on that, and that does not seem to be the case. In, it's, it's not the case anymore. Anyways, though, what I found a couple of months ago at this point was a senior multiplayer designer. Now, this doesn't make a lot of sense. How is this related to Spyro? Well, it stated that they were looking for someone to help design multiplayer for a game that ran on the Unreal Engine. Every other job application ran on the, or talked about running on the Unreal Engine. This one did not, I don't think, specifically state that it was for the Unreal Engine, but we'll get to that in a minute. Anyways, all those other job applications were obviously for the Spyro remake. I mean, what else would they be for at this point? But here's the thing. There's a senior multiplayer designer that needs to be hired at Toys for Bob to make online multiplayer video games. Here's the thing. Spyro is neither online nor is it multiplayer. And this job is hiring for someone to work on an online multiplayer game. But it gets even more interesting because now, now that we have actually officially revealed the Spyro remake, if you go on to Toys for Bob's website and you click on the job application now, it now states for the senior multiplayer designer or whatever the official title is that the they're working on the reignited trilogy this does not make sense y'all because again spyro is a single player not online game for some reason though they're hiring a senior online multiplayer designer for this position and it makes no sense i mean it, it doesn't make any sense. How do you make a single player game in its remaster be multiplayer? You that doesn't make sense. And yet it, here we are, right? This this uh, this position that we're in, I'm going to keep saying it. It makes absolutely no sense for them to need to hire a multiplayer game designer for Spyro the Dragon. But yet here we are. What does this mean? Honestly, all I haven't a clue because Again, how do you make Spyro the Dragon, the original series, multiplayer or online? What facet of Spyro can be made online? I don't know. Now, what's interesting is that some people have stated that they think that Spyro will in some way, shape, or form have a paid DLC due to two things. First up, the game is only retailing for $40. It's not even the price of a full game. Secondly, though, the games are actually considered to be short by modern standards, and some people may be expecting a fuller gaming experience from these games. And so, with that in mind, I can actually see them doing some kind of of DLC to add on to the experience. Now, it would not be original content, obviously. I know you had, a, what was it, Stormy Ascent for Crash Bandicoot, which was technically original content that just never made it past the early development process. But the thing is with this, this would be entirely new content that was not there in the first place, and if it was multiplayer somehow, would be very, very different than what was originally conceived for Spyro. So, yeah, that's potentially what this confirms very interestingly, and I'm, I'm amazed no one caught that there's a position for a multiplayer designer on their website, because it's very, very obvious if you go to job listings, and the implications of such a job listing are pretty far-reaching in terms of it could mean DLC 
for this game, and that's definitely something that, that needs to be acknowledged. Now, as for when this content could officially be revealed, my best guess would probably be E3 along with a Nintendo Switch version. That would make a lot of sense as the Switch has come, basically been advertised as this console that you can take anywhere and play with your friends anywhere. So, if somehow the ad reveal type thing that was kind of tied together with the Switch version of this game was that it was multiplayer in some way if you bought the DLC, or maybe even if you did not buy the DLC. That could be a very interesting way of marketing this game, but I definitely think that if they take a game that was originally single player and make it multiplayer in any way, shape, or form, you're obviously going to get a lot of kickback from the fans, but honestly, after Skylanders, they're probably just used to kickback from fans by now, so they probably really will not care if some super hardcore, you know, fundamentalist Spyro fans are like, no, you changed my basic Spyro remake. You know, there's going to be those people, and I guarantee you some people, those people are watching this video right now. I had to ban someone from my channel the other day because they were just ranting and raving about how their beloved Spyro had been tainted by Skylanders, something like that, and they just would not shut up about it. But, you know, I, I understand that Activision would get kickback from it, but at the same time, if they think there's a way to make money off of it, they're gonna do it as Skylanders pretty much proved. So nothing is beyond Activision for this remake and paid DLC that makes the game multiplayer is not actually something I'd put beyond Activision, especially after we found this job listing. So it's interesting. It's very, very, very interesting and honestly we're just gonna have to wait to try to understand this because to speculate further you, you really you, you can't very well anyways guys that is all i have for you guys today thank you guys so much for watching please tell me down in the comments what you think about this is it interesting at all to you that this seems to be like there's some multiplayer stuff going on are you do you buy into this do you think this is some kind of decoy of some sort what are your thoughts tell me down in the comments anyways guys that is all i have for you guys today. This has been Portal Master 9351. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and shout out to all my patrons on Patreon, especially Liam Corner and the Collector Creepypasta. See you next time, guys.